my name is Alan Williams. I'm a business intelligence professional. I've been producing YouTube video tutorials for about five years now. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a couple of big players in the industry. So we're going to have a look at SAP Business Objects and Tableau. So these are two distinct technologies. Business Objects has been around for approximately 25 years and it's owned by SAP for the last 10, and it's considered an enterprise reporting solution. You can create charts and interactive charts and business objects, but its, it's main focus isn't data visualization. Tableau hasn't been around for as long. I think it's been around since approximately 2003, but it's grown exponentially. and has a very large user base, which continues to grow all the time. So you have a lot of companies that already have an investment in another platform. In this example, we're talking about business objects, and they brought in Tableau uh, as a supplementary tool for their data visualization. What we're going to focus on today is how to bridge those two platforms together. And we're going to be looking at software called InfoBurst. It's from a company called Infosol, and they are partners of both SAP and Tableau. Before we go any further, I should state that I don't have any particular um, connection to any of the companies um, included in this video tutorial. I'm just a customer and I'm just um, going to explain how you can leverage business objects with Tableau by using this InfoBurst software. So let's, let's get started. If you're familiar with business objects, uh, you know that in order to create a report, you go into the data access tab and you create a query. In this case, I've already created one. I'm using a data source uh, or database from Microsoft called the AdventureWorks DW database. So it's a, it's a data warehouse sample database. It's got fact tables, dimension tables. It's a great, uh, it's a great database to use for doing samples and, and for learning. So that's what the data source is. And in this particular report, I'm just bringing in some product information, the name, category, subcategory, order date, the country, region, and sales amount. I'm just going to close this. So the scenario that we have, and what we want to do is typically in business objects, you have a universe which has a trusted data source. So most often it's pointing to a, a data warehouse in your environment, which in most cases will be balanced on a regular basis so you know it's a trusted data source and you have users who know how to go in and create reports using web intelligence business objects have been in your company for a long time they know how to create the queries Let's, let me just go back and illustrate some pieces. so they know how to go in and and bring these objects and these dimensions and measures into the query panel and get the data they want they don't necessarily know how to write a sql statement against the database uh, that's required in order to get this data. So you want to leverage business objects functionality with your Tableau work because your business users already understand this. They don't know how to create queries for the most part. So in this report, um, again, these are the objects I've selected. And the idea now is I want to use InfoBurst to publish this block of data into a Tableau data extract, which then I, which I can then either Push to a network share, SharePoint, or actually publish directly up to a Tableau server where it can be consumed um, as a Tableau data extract, either by working with it directly in with the web authoring functionality of Tableau server, or by connecting to Tableau server with Tableau desktop and using the data extract. So that's a scenario that we're going to be attempting to replicate here. So now we've created the Web Intelligence Report and we're in InfoBurst. Just a couple of words about InfoBurst. Uh, they're owned by a company called InfoSol. InfoBurst itself has been around for many years um, and it works uh, in conjunction with SAP Business Objects. I believe it also works with SQL Server Reporting Services. Um, and I like to describe this software as um, if you take the core functionality of Business Objects for scheduling, reporting, or sorry, scheduling, bursting and distribution and put it on steroids. That's the way I like to describe InfoBurst because it adds a lot of extra functionality for those areas. So they've added functionality specifically to bridge business objects to Tableau. 
And that's what we're going to look at today. We're not going to be touching on other functionality of the product. Feel free to check their website out. Um, the other use case we have is we're going to take Tableau workbook that's been created based on the extract we create. And we're going to burst or split that workbook up based on a certain dimension. So the example we're going to have is a workbook that we're going to break up by country. And so rather than having one Tableau workbook for each country, we're going to have one workbook with all countries and split it into individual TWBX files. So I've already created the work, the burst in InfoBurst. They call it a burst. So if I open up this reseller sales TDE burst. Um, so the first thing I had to do was specify the document that we're gonna use. So in a previous step, I had brought in this reseller sales analysis Webby report from the business objects platform. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. And then in deliveries, if I go into my delivery here. So we can see that the destination is Tableau server. Um, I mentioned Infoverse has been around for a while and has a lot of different options. So you can publish these to SharePoint, WebDAV, you know, Network Share, FTP server, pretty well anything you can think of. In this case, we're pushing it to a Tableau server. We have to put in the Tableau server credentials and select the project that we want to publish this to and whether or not we want to replace the existing Tableau data extract if it has the same name. So we'll just keep that checked. Format. We're saying Tableau Data Extract as the format, which is the only one you can select if you're using um, the destination of Tableau Server. And we're using the first row as column headers, tab to extract, extract the data from all data, and report block, block one. So if, if you have multiple blocks of data in your Webby report, you have to name the block you're going to use. If you don't have multiple blocks, you don't have to do this. I just did in this example. So that is what we have for the InfoBurst side of things. And when I'm ready to go, I just click on Burst Now. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to pause the video and then we'll go look on Tableau Server, see if the file was created and uploaded to the server. I'm logged into Tableau Server, so I'm going to select the project that we published this data source to. If I click on the Data Sources tab, I can see right here Sales Extract from Webby. Again, with Tableau Server, uh, just like very similar to Business Objects, everything that users can see or cannot see is um, determined by the permissions you set. So I'm logged in as a super user here. I can see everything. Um, so users that have access to this I to this folder and then to this extract can then use that extract to create visualization. So there's two ways of doing it. One is to select the data extract by clicking on this checkbox and then actions and new workbook. So this is right on Tableau server. In this case, it's an instance of Tableau online. Um, so you'll see the interface is pretty similar to Tableau desktop, but there isn't anywhere near as much functionality in the web authoring. But Having said that, there are a lot of things that you can do. So I can bring in product category and I can bring in sales. I can bring the country into color. You can even use the show me uh, functionality if I want to change this to a different chart type. I can do that. So the web authoring functionality of Tableau Server, I think, has improved quite a bit. And from what I understand from being at their conference last year, they're going to be continuing to add more functionality to the web authoring capabilities. So that's one thing you can do with the data extract published from Business Objects Web Intelligence to Tableau Server. The other thing that you can do is on Tableau Desktop, which I'm going to open in a minute, you can then connect to Tableau Server and use that Tableau data extract. I've just opened Tableau Desktop Professional. So you see under Server, I am signed into Tableau Server already. If I wasn't, I would click on here and then enter my credentials and go from there. So now I can go to connect to a Tableau Server. And I want to select that data source that we created. 
do we call that sales extract from Webby? So I click on this. And so now it's going to say to download the data source. I'm going to say save. So now I can go ahead and I can start with Tableau Desktop going ahead and creating a visualization. Very similar to what I was doing on the web-based product, except now we have a lot more functionality. So I can create a full-blown dashboard with Tableau Desktop Professional using data extract created from a web intelligence report. So that, to me, that's pretty powerful functionality because you don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to create the SQL or copy the SQL from web intelligence and paste it into Tableau as your data source. You can use whatever data you have in your web intelligence report. One more thing I should mention is you can also in web intelligence, you can also create um, variables, which are like calculated fields in Tableau, and add them to your block of data, and that will come over as well. So it's not just objects in the universe. It can be calculated fields as well in web intelligence. Okay, so we can go ahead now and, and create a dashboard. I've already created one, so I'm going to switch to that. Okay, so I'm in Tableau Desktop. I've created an interactive dashboard by selecting a country, category sales changes, and by selecting um, category, I see a breakdown of sales by subcategory. And I can go back and select another country and do the same thing. So interactive dashboard. In this example though, so I've created a dashboard that's got the sales by each of the countries. So let's say for instance that I wanted to split this up. I wanted to send the Australia Tableau workbook to the Australia manager, Canada to the Canadian manager, etc. So in the end, I'll have a dashboard. It's going to only have one bar here for each country and then the interactive components over here. So probably not the best example, but by showing this, you'll see very clearly how this works. So that, that's the scenario. And I'm going to use InfoBurst to do that. So the end result will be um, six TWBX files, one for each of the countries. And the source for this burst will be this TWBX file. Back in InfoBurst, so I've already brought in our sales dashboard. This is the TWBX file that had that dashboard for all the countries. I just went new document and I brought this in from my machine. So I've created a, a new burst for this already. So let me just open it up and show you what's in here. So I su supplied the name of the web intelligence report. Again, that's the basis. It's going to be used for splitting this dashboard up by country. For filters, this is where I select sales territory country as the filter for the burst. So it's going to burst it based on the country names in the report. And for deliveries, I have it set to burst the report to a network share. In this case, it is a folder on my laptop called Tableau Workbooks backslash files. So when this burst is finished, it's going to place the six dashboards in this folder. If I go to format here, I want it as a Tableau package workbook. I'm going to embed the sales dashboard TWBX file and the other information again, like we had before, the name of the report and the block to extract the data from. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Before I start the process, let's just have a look at that folder. So this is C Tableau files. This is the network share I set up where the dashboard should be placed once the process is finished. So I'm going to click on burst now. And then I'll just pause the video while this thing finishes. So we can see the process did finish. I'm seeing the last step finished at 12.49.56 p.m. So now if I go to my network, share, I am seeing six TWBX files, one for each of the countries. Now the naming convention, uh, I just used the default, so it took the name of the burst underscore and then the country. This can be changed. Um, one of the functionality functionalities in InfoBurst is a macro builder, so you can have kind of dynamic names for the output files. But for this example, we we just have six dashboards, so I double click on one of these guys to open it. I should only see the results for Canada and only one bar in, in the left-hand side of this dashboard. 
And that's exactly what I do see. I'm gonna change the layout here to laptop browser so we can see. So there's Canada. And I click on the interactive areas. I'm only seeing data related to the country of Canada in this dashboard. And just to prove that there's no magic involved here, I'll click on United States. It's gonna open up another instance of Tableau. Change this again to, and now we're just seeing for United States. So there you have it. If you're a business objects shop and you're starting to implement Tableau, uh, you can leverage business objects um, with Tableau. If you have a look at, I think there's some other products available as well. I'm not sure how they work. I haven't had exposure to them, but I have had exposure to to InfoBurst, and uh, it does kind of fill that gap. It um, it does take reports you've created in business objects and create data extracts that can be used in Tableau, sort of simplify your simplify your process. And um, if you're using data from a trusted data source, such as a data warehouse that's balanced on a regular basis, then you know you're not going to have to worry about too many data governance issues. So. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about how InfoBurst works, visit infosol.com. Let me go back there if I can for a minute. And uh, they'll be happy to, to help you out. So once again, this is Alan Williams. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video informational. And um, if you're interested in having a look at some more video tutorials I've done, just go to alanwilliams.ca. And if you're interested in connecting with me on LinkedIn, uh, you can find me easily enough on LinkedIn to search for Alan Williams Winnipeg and you'll and you'll find me. Once again, thanks for watching.